Jawad, you started your career in the Big Four at Deloitte. Uh, you were here at Morgan Franklin, actually, for a number of years, and then you left us. You came back. It's what we call at Morgan Franklin a boomerang story. Tell us yeah. a little bit about, you know, what happened when you left the firm. You obviously grew as a professional, and then you came back to us. Tell, tell us a little bit about what brought you back and what you found since arriving back at Morgan Franklin. Yeah, so I think, like, you know, the biggest thing has been the fact that the culture of Morgan Franklin has really grown and, you know, the entrepreneurship that we teach to our people over here has been the most attractive thing for me. And coming back, really looking at all of our leadership, the people that work here, and the exponential growth that we've had has been prevalent across the board. And one of the main things has been that if you think about how we treat our people, um, the guiding principles we live day by day under Chris Mann's leadership is something that is reflective of across all levels. And the fact that 85% of our MDs have been promoted from within. Five out of them were senior consultants, and I, I was technically one of them too. So not to say anything else, but I would say the culture is one of the most beautiful things that our firm has, and we've held on to it for 25 years, and it's amazing that we're celebrating our 25th year anniversary today. Was there anything that surprised you when you got back under the fold? I think one of the biggest surprises was that I didn't realize how much maturity and growth the firm had experienced. And when I was here like, you know, nine years ago, it was, we were a smaller firm and now we're a big firm delivering value creation across private equity firms, Fortune 100, 500 companies, et cetera. But the maturity in our capability and offerings is something that has been a very pleasant surprise for me. And being able to go and take that and deliver it to the market has honestly made it even easier to you know, deliver excellence to our clients. It's really interesting you talk about growth. Obviously, in the past you know, five, six years, we've been acquired by private equity ourselves. We have served the private equity community for the 25 years that we've been in business. But the, the rigor and the discipline that you're putting around the redevelopment of this practice is profound. So talk a little bit about how you're rebuilding our private equity go-to-market strategy and the practice that is ultimately going to market alongside you. Yeah, no, that's a great question. And I think, you know, as you've been an incredible partner to me in all of this, right, as we operationalize the private equity practice, what we're doing is we're using this opportunity to treat it like a funnel. So we have our four solutions, risk and regulatory, IM&T, strategy and transformation, and accounting advisory. And the beauty of our, of our firm is, right, even we talked about growth, we've grown exponentially, we haven't created silos. And that has allowed for a lot of cross-pollination, cross-collaboration. And private equity is a funnel where we can build teams from across all of these solutions and deliver what our clients need throughout the M&A life cycle. And operationalizing that on the, on the footholds of how do we think about from diligence to exit in delivering all of our core capabilities has been you know, a challenging you know, first step for us. But as we've gone through this cycle over the last two years, now we've built a practice where we can very easily go to market and deliver private equity core services to our clients. Um, and that is something that we're seeing and the market is being very well received. Yeah, and, and you, know, you and I and you and your teams are talking to multiple private equity leaders, sponsors, operating partners a day at this point. What do you feel is making them come back to us? You know, what are they finding so refreshing about Morgan Franklin's private equity services? So you, know, if you and I both know, within the private equity ecosystem, it is extremely challenging to disrupt an existing service provider. And obviously we don't want to get disrupted either, right? And our competitors are doing amazing work as well. So what we have really honed in on is, what is Morgan Franklin's differentiator? Obviously we have an amazing culture, we have amazing people, but as we go to market, what is it, what are the one or two things that we can really take to our clients and say, this is what we do really well. And as we look into it and as we go to market, one of the, the two things we focused on is our IT capabilities. The fact that we start from a diligence point of view and support our clients from an IT cyber diligence perspective. But that's not where we stop. We continue to support our clients throughout the life cycle where we can come in 
you know, under Francois's leadership and establish an IT infrastructure. We're not theoretically topic talking about it. We're coming in, rolling up our sleeves and establishing that infrastructure, going and doing voice cutovers, setting up security networks. That is all done in-house. And that is something we've noticed that in the market, a lot of our competitors are not being able to deliver as a capability. Secondly, our focus always has been in recruiting from top 10, top 20 business schools. And we've leveraged that to our benefit by focusing on what is our expertise in helping our clients within the PE ecosystem establishing you know, four-year strategy plans. How are they thinking about go-to-market? How are they really thinking about rationalizing some of the product-related bundling customer success journeys? And that kind of bundled within that go-to-market capability offering is something that has been very accretive to our clients. And we're working hand-in-hand -hand with helping them not only create value, but also experience that growth where we can, we can bring a perspective. So it's obvious that we do a lot and, and we serve private equity across the value creation life cycle. You are an extremely effective leader. People like to work for you and they like to work with you. Talk to me a little bit about your, your ability to hold our team accountable to that delivery excellence that you expect. So, you know, as I took over this role, one of the things I realized was that the PE ecosystem is a challenging environment to be in because you don't get a lot of shots. So if you're delivering work at one of the portfolio companies of X private equity firm and you don't deliver excellence, you're not going to get another shot, which is why the, the core foundation of the PE practice, similar to Morgan Franklin's, has been that we are focused on delivering excellence at every single project that we're delivering be it small, large, medium. And that is something that the team understands because they're passionate about it. And it is one of those things where when I take a step back, I acknowledge that it's very fast paced. It is challenging. We're doing pitches, you know, day in, day out, but we're also delivering to our clients. So everybody's working really hard. And one thing that I had to realize very early on was that how do you bring in accountability within our teams, but also bring that care and affection Right? And that's what really builds teams. And the private equity team in itself would say that we've created a very family-like environment and we're, we're having fun, we're working hard, but you know, there's, there's hard times, there's tough times, but there's, there's a lot of fun as well as we go through this uh, successful uh, growth trajectory. Do you have a proudest moment? You know, you're growing and you're grooming this team of experts and future leaders. Is there a moment that stands out to you? I would say like, you know, one of the things where as we were building out the practice and thinking about what does success look like for Morgan Franklin's private equity practice, and that ultimately is that we are a select provider for a private equity firm, and we're basically doing almost everything within that deal life cycle, from diligence to post-transaction integration or carve out or, you know, optimization. And one of our clients where, you know, the private equity firm asked us to do a small financial due diligence, operational diligence project. Within that, our team came in and delivered incredibly valuable insights into how can they reduce costs in the future. From an FDD, ODD perspective, it was, you know, we delivered the, the deliverable, et cetera, but there was a lot of value in terms of what does that future path look like. The firm asked us to, why don't you continue to support us from a post-merger integration perspective, but also help us realize some of these costs savings. And our team was incredible in delivering that value. And it didn't stop there. While we were able to go and perform their post-merger integration, we were able to deliver value creation across operational initiatives, finance transformation. And as we went through that, we realized those cost savings identified as the pre-deal diligence. And that doesn't happen quite often, right? Lastly, as we were going through this entire process, the fact that we were again asked by the client to come in and also implement their ERP system, and the chosen ERP was NetSuite, our NetSuite team came in seamlessly as, as like a you know, weave in to our private equity team. It didn't feel like a transition and delivered that implementation was one of those moments where when we zoomed out, we had touched on Morgan Franklin's capabilities across every single solution. Um, and you know, obviously I'm summarizing here, but that was a pretty proud moment to see 
all of us from different solutions coming together under the umbrella of the PE Pract. I love that example, and it shows our true cross-functional delivery capacity. Take it one step farther. We've been acquired by a $1.5 billion talent solutions firm globally. How has that scale enabled us to manifest you know, different relationships, more success on behalf of our clients, and ultimately value creation? The fact that you know, we are part of such an incredible, you know, our Vega Holdings where we have sister brands, the, the value creation there is where when a private equity firm calls you and says, hey, can you deliver work in London or you know, anywhere in Asia? The answer always is yes, because we can pick up the phone and call our colleagues at Global Solutions. We can call our colleagues at Focus Search Partners where if there's a retained search. So the ability to be able to say yes to a lot of things that we weren't able to really gives us an edge. And we talked about differentiators in the beginning. That is one of the core differentiators as well, that it allows us to flex beyond high-end management consulting, but also be an, a value add to our clients, right? Like we, we are not just taking and delivering projects. We're also bringing in perspective and connecting them with other service areas that that's not our core offering. And that's, that's been a pretty powerful message. Last question. So there's been a lot of market volatility, obviously, coming out of COVID, heading into um, uncertain economic times. We obviously pivoted a bit when deal volume decreased last year. We addressed our relationships a little bit differently than we might have in the past. And now we're, we're seeing glimmers of hope in the M&A market. You know, a lot of tuck-in acquisitions are happening, we're happening and we're seeing a little bit more of the strategics. Talk to me about how we pivoted and sort of what you think the future looks like in the service of PE. Absolutely. So when we started out the year, we were expecting a slowdown in M&A activity because of the tough credit environment, interest rates going up. And we realized that if we want to be successful in this space, we have to pivot as the PE pivots, right? So that ecosystem is pivoting. We got to pivot and really align our services to that. As deal volume slowed down, we focused on value creation. We focused on cost optimization. We focused on headcount optimization. And that's where we were continuing to support our clients while the PE firms focused on their portcos on those core areas. And as we see, uh, although the credit environment is not improving, but the divergence between the bid and ask from a deal perspective has reduced. And that is where we're seeing an uptake in um, acquisition integration, a lot of platform deals happening with the onset of how do they go and do multiple add-ons. And now we're really coming into how are you accelerating the platform to add on integration? How are you really creating strategies that allow you to continue to do that and have that ability to do it in a, in a way where you're not going away with diligence, you're identifying synergies. And any synergies that we identify as part of our diligence, whether it's FDD or ODD, we're looking to really think about tracking through that and realizing those instead of a lot of the times, right, you do the, the diligence, you identify synergies, and then they're kind of, you know, lost track of that. But our team's focus has been as part of our acquisition integration methodology and really focusing on helping our clients realize those synergies, tracking them as well.